Biden's first 10 days were the dream of a progressive. The last three days, well, it's been a nightmare. Hello from Washington, D.C., our national capital. I'm Chuck Kyle, a 30-year strategic planner, a strategic communications expert, retired intelligence officer, and a D.C. transplant from West Virginia. Last week, I talked about Biden's sleepy start. However, I did so just from a policy perspective and not that of a progressive or a Democrat nor a Republican. Yes, the first 10 days of executive actions looked like he was just going down a progressive checklist. Even Congressman Ilhan Omar tweeted, just in the first week, the Biden administration has acted on many of progressives top asks. Well, then things began to change. The first thing was that the $15 minimum wage would not be in a COVID relief bill because a Senate parliamentarian decided that the $15 minimum wage could not be part of the budget reconciliation bill. To add salt to the wound, the White House stated that Vice President Harris would not vote to overrule. She could, but would not. Okay, I'll be honest. I had no idea what a Senate parliamentarian even was. Our current one is Elizabeth McDonough, and she was appointed in 2012 by Majority Leader Harry Reid. Her position is to interpret the standing rules of the United States Senate and the parliamentary process. An important role is to decide what can and cannot be done underneath the Senate's reconciliation process with the Byrd Rules provision. Side note, the parliamentarian role in the Senate is only an advisory role and they do not decide what the Senate can and cannot do. The Senate themselves decide the rules for the Senate. Again, Omar tweeted, abolish the filibuster, replace the parliamentarian. And this is precisely what Republicans did 20 years ago in 2001, when faced with a similar hurdle in an equally divided Senate for an ambitious tax cutting plan. Republicans fired the parliamentarian standing in their way, put one in that wouldn't. So, my gut feeling, the Senate Democrats aren't going to overrule this one because most of them are not crazy about increasing the minimum wage. And now we can say, well, we wanted to, but all right, I digress. Now, you know what? Congressional Democrats just do not want to do it. They're just lying and they need to say that they're just not interested for whatever reason they have. However, for now, this is one of those items that progressives will have to just take off of their list, at least for a while. A side note, though, is in February, a YouGov poll showed that 56% of Americans supported the minimum wage increase to $15 per hour in the COVID relief bill. So greater than half thought the increase in the minimum wage was appropriate for the bill. And then the White House just let it slip away. Don't believe that only the Democrats are screwing up. A morning consult political Politico poll showed that 60% of Republicans support the $1.9 trillion stimulus package as a whole. Yet, not a single House Republican voted for the bill in the House. As far as net support for executive actions and bills, the $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill is the fifth most popular bill since 1990. The second most popular? Well, that was a 2007 increase in the minimum wage. I think both parties should really look and see the demands lie within the American population. If you'd like to know more about my opinion about the $15 minimum wage, Click on the link above or at the video at the end. Well, then the second thing that happened, the news broke that Biden had bombed Syria without congressional authorization, <laughs> just like Trump and Obama did. However, Biden said he sent a letter over to Congress stating that the bombing was consistent with the U.S. right of self-defense. I didn't know we had a self-defense requirement against Syria. This kind of feels like the last 20 years of status quo. I guess getting out of the Middle East isn't a U.S. priority. It also appears that re-entering the Iran nuclear deal isn't a priority. Well, I would think that this would be a little, make it a little harder. To throw a red herring into the mix and, and tie this all back to the reconciliation bill, we can start bombing Syria without concern about what the Senate would think. Still, given that Harris could overrule to ensure that the $15 minimum wage was in the bill, well, <laughs> we wouldn't want to do that. All right, and the third thing is, is lastly, we find out that Biden is not going to do anything to penalize Crown Saudi Crown Prince MBS over killing a U.S. resident and Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. 
Enlightened by an intelligence report that confirmed everybody's suspicion that MBS had ordered Khashoggi's capture or kill order. I think Jake Tapper from CNN pointed out the, the hypocrisy in this the best when he tweeted, Yes, hi, I see all you folks willing to look away from the brutal slaughter of a U.S. resident and Washington Post columnist because you like this president, and thus it doesn't bother you that Biden isn't punishing the Saudi crown prince res responsible? <laughs> You're wrong. Well, here's what it sounds like when the left media has started to turn against you. This is Dana Bash on CNN. It looks like that is what a, a complicated global engagement Jen. looks like. And we have made no secret and been clear we are going to hold them accountable Jen. and on the global stage and in with direct Jen. actions. Yeah, I, I hear you, but I, you say hold them accountable and it just doesn't look like that when it comes to the notion of justice. And the question is, do you feel like justice has really been done when it comes specifically to the crown prince and his role in the brutal murder of a journalist because the journalist uh, was working on stories that were challenging him. Airstrikes, no accountability, no increase in the minimum wage, and no checks. Progressives and Democrats need to realize that Biden is just a status quo politician at the end of the day. So if you like this video and the content, please hit the like button and subscribe. When you subscribe, add into the comments. I subscribe. Until next time, trust but verify.